While every fan knows the most famous black and green monster truck in the sport of monster truck competition, there is one other black and green truck that has made a name for itself for three decades. With its striking color scheme, fantastical police livery, flashing lights and siren, and the iconic wing, it has a history of being one of the most eye-catching trucks on the circuit. Not only is the truck itself well known, but many of its drivers are some of the most decorated and celebrated in the sport's history. This is the evolution of one of the most prolific names in the world of monster trucks, and this is the evolution of Monster Patrol. The name Monster Patrol is a spin-off of the name Mud Patrol. Originally created by Monster Jam's most decorated mud racer, Tom Martin, in the 1980s. Former late model racer and wealthy businessman Paul Schaefer would begin driving Mud Patrol in late 1990, having previously been a sponsor for Martin, winning a USA Tree Points Championship two years later, and eventually buying Mud Patrol from Martin altogether followed by a heated lawsuit over who really owned the Mud Patrol name after the sale had taken place. Regardless, once the case was settled, both the vehicle and name belonged to Schaefer. At the same time, Paul Schaefer would enter the world of monster truck racing after purchasing Jack Wilman's fourth tourist truck in 1992 and decided to create a monster truck version of Mud Patrol, fittingly named Monster Patrol. Monster Patrol would debut in January of 1993, driven by Paul Schaefer, and made its first televised appearance at Louisville Motor Speedway on the USHRA Monster Wars circuit, now known as Monster Jam. Ironically enough, its first televised race was against Eldon Depew in Taurus. The truck had everything that it's best known for, except for the now iconic wing. Inspired by the wing that you would see on a sprint car, this feature would be added to the truck not long afterwards and was meant to be a way to apply downforce to the rear of the truck to stop it from nose diving so much while in the air. The wing is said to have added 400 pounds of downforce to the rear end given the truck was going fast enough for it to apply such downforce. Whether its benefits were noticeable or not, the most iconic feature of the truck had now been introduced. While not a major threat during its debut season, at the Monster Wars World Finals in Pontiac, Michigan, Paul Schaefer would end up squaring off against Fred Schaefer, a man who just happened to share his last name, who is the newly crowned USHRA World Champion behind the wheel of Barefoot. And what perhaps may be the biggest upset of the entire season, Master Patrol would defeat Barefoot in the final race of the night, proving that while Master Patrol wasn't the champion, he could clearly beat the truck that was, making a big statement to his contemporaries. Halfway through 1994, Paul Schaefer would debut a brand new Monster Patrol, this time built from scratch. It was similar in design to the original Taurus 4 truck, but was rear engine instead of front engine. Although it's now an iconic feature of the truck, it's unclear why the wing was kept for the rear engine truck due to it not needing any extra downforce in the rear, but it was part of Monster Patrol's look, so it stayed. Since Paul had built a new truck, the old one needed a full-time driver, which led to a fellow mud racer by the name of Tom Mance getting behind the wheel. Before Monster Patrol, Tom Mance loved watching Jack Wilman's Taurus compete, and it prompted him to start helping the team at various events when the truck was driven by Eldon Depew. Tom had also helped out Paul on occasion when the two trucks were competing in shows together, and even drove a version of Mud Patrol on his personal mud racer by the name of Shake Me. So when he got the opportunity to drive one of the Taurus trucks as Monster Patrol, he didn't take it lightly. Unfortunately for Tom, as someone who competed mostly on the USHRA and USA Motorsport circuits, most of his time behind the wheel of Monster Patrol from 1994 to 1997 was non-televised and only small amounts of footage are available. In 1995, Tom did win the very first Thunder on the Beach event in Wildwood, New Jersey, so his skills were not entirely unseen. 
During those years, Paul would continue to drive the rear engine Monster Patrol to the special events Pender Point series on television. And while he wouldn't win any events on his tour, he would be the most heavily showcased driver of the team. For 1996, Schaefer would purchase yet another Taurus truck, being the former Taurus 5 and convert it into the third Monster Patrol to be driven by Bill Hazlitt. This truck would also run as its alter ego, Super Truck 20, if another Monster Patrol was at the same event. For one special events, Pender Point Series event in Canfield, Ohio that same year, Super Truck 20 would run as a temporary Monster Patrol, as the real Monster Patrol had blown its engine prior to the event. This also would be far from the last time that a Paul Schaefer Motorsports truck would have another truck's name hastily replacing its regular identity. Another noteworthy development for the team this year would be the implementation of a hydraulic jack for lifting up axles of Monster Patrol to change its tires. This had yet to be implemented in the world of Monster Trucks before Schaefer introduced it and is now the industry standard way of lifting the axles of a monster truck, as opposed to a mechanical jack that is operated purely by hand. By this point, Monster Patrol was now a three truck team, with Schaefer driving the rear engine truck, Mentz driving the former Taurus 4, and Hazlitt driving the former Taurus 5. 1997 would be a big year for Monster Patrol, as not only did the truck regain additional TV exposure through Inside Monster Jam, but the world finally got to see what Tom Mance was capable of when behind the wheel of the truck. Mance was proving to be the most daring and spectacular driver of the team, and Monster Patrol had proven to be one of the key players at every event it was at, no matter who was driving. During the first weekend of the year, Paul Schaefer would have an infamous crash in St. Louis that not only damaged the truck, but knocked Paul unconscious in the process. That same year, Tom Mance would drive Monster Patrol at the US Truck Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina, making it to the final round of racing for all three days and only winning one of them. Mance was crowned the official US Truck Fest champion as a result, similar to an overall event championship you'd see at a Monster Jam event today. He would also pick up victories in Houston, Minneapolis, and San Antonio during the Monster Jam season, and once again in Wildwood. Brian Welch would also replace Bill Hazlitt as the driver of the Taurus 5 Monster Patrol and Super Truck 20, and Schaefer would drive said truck at the Hawaiian Monster Smash events during the summer performing one of the best saves of the year in the process. In October of that year, owner Paul Schaefer would perhaps make his biggest purchase when he acquired the entire barefoot operation from Fred Schaefer, save for one truck that he would eventually acquire in 2002, that being Barefoot 11, also known as Rampage. This meant that the three trucks and the Barefoot name would join the team alongside Monster Patrol. This sale would become much more relevant to Monster Patrol as this video continues. I run about 60 pounds and I actually run 120 pounds. Not in my town, you don't. I'm checking tire height too. I don't think that qualifies as a monster truck tire. Son, these tires just don't get it. I need you to step on out of the car, son. You don't have to film it up. <laughs> Not again. Cops is filmed on location with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. 1998 proved to be yet another successful year for Monster Patrol, with Tom Mance still proving to be the showman of the team, and Schaefer and Welch being formidable competitors as well. Mance would pick up Monster Jam victories in Houston and Pontiac, and was becoming more and more well known for his freestyle antics. Monster Patrol was also a frequent rival of Gravedigger during this time, prompting Mentz to refer to the two of them as the Black and Green Wrecking Machines, creating the nickname. Even a Monster Patrol go-kart would debut around this time, performing at events into the 2000s as a side act. By the end of 1998, Tom Mance was no longer running the wing on Monster Patrol, as he was actually on the tail end of running the name for Paul Schaefer. 
During this time, Mance would be offered an opportunity to run the bulldozer name for Monster Jam as they had recently acquired the name. Mance would actually buy the Taurus 4 truck from Schaefer and finish running the Monster Patrol name in February of 1999 before switching over to Bulldozer. As a result, Paul Schaefer would become the flagship Monster Patrol driver once more for the 1999 Monster Jam season. During this time, future Gravedigger driver Rod Schmidt would replace Brian Welch as the driver of the newly upgraded Taurus 5 Monster Patrol, driving the truck until the summer of 1999, where he would be replaced by former Shredder and High Anxiety driver Brent Worsler. Todd Frolick was the main barefoot driver for Paul Schaefer during this time, driving Barefoot 12. But in the spring of 1999, Frolic was going to turn his barefoot into another Monster Patrol, perhaps to fill the dates that Tom Mance would have made. Frolic had driven Paul's rear engine Monster Patrol the previous year in Pikes Peak, Colorado for a US Truck Fest event, but now his personal truck was being given a new coat of paint. As mentioned earlier, it wasn't uncommon for various Paul Schaefer trucks to hastily rebrand themselves in order to fulfill a booking, and this would end up being an iconic example of such. Seeing as Frolic's truck featured orange detailing on the four links and sway bars, the consensus was that it wouldn't look good next to a black and green paint scheme. As a result, instead of just repainting the orange parts, the decision was made to introduce a brand new color scheme to Monster Patrol, being the cult classic purple and orange design. Frolic would drive the truck, albeit without a wing, during the spring of 1999 before ultimately leaving the team to drive Gravedigger. The most famous driver to adopt this color scheme was Brian Barthel, who completely repainted his little tiger truck to become the second purple and orange monster patrol that summer. Brian would campaign this paint scheme for a full year before changing it back to Little Tiger in the summer of 2000. Another surprising Monster Patrol driver to come about during this time was Guy Wood, who drove the Taurus 5 Monster Patrol at an event at Mesa Park in the summer of 1999. This was more or less a tryout for Guy Wood, who was allegedly on the verge of forming a partnership with Paul Schaefer to run the Carolina Crusher name on his bulldozer truck. Ultimately, this deal would never come to fruition, and this would be one of Guy Wood's only appearances driving for Paul Schaefer. Paul Schaefer Motorsports would expand significantly in the year 1999, purchasing Carolina Crusher, Boogie Van, Overkill, Ground Pounder, and Wild Thang before the end of the year. This gave Paul even more options for utilizing certain names and identities. As a result, Kirk Dabney's Overkill would be turned into another Monster Patrol, this time being purple and white to match the Extreme Overkill paint scheme. On top of that, Tough Truck driver Jeff Hoy would introduce a Monster Patrol Tough Truck in November of the same year, set to compete primarily on the Monster Jam circuit. In the year 2000, there would be five different Monster Patrols competing on the Monster Jam circuit. Brian Barthel's truck, Kirk Dabney's truck, the famed Bigfoot driver, Dave Harkey in Paul's rear engine truck, Richard Patterson in what was Todd Frolick's truck, and Brent Worsler in Taurus 5. Unfortunately, while the five various Monster Patrols performed strongly all year long, getting multiple wins in both stadiums and arenas such as Anaheim, Houston, San Diego, Toronto, Portland, and Kansas City, none of this would be shown on television. 2000 would end up being a very consequential year for the team, as they had signed to a promotional company called Milestone Motorsports in mid-1999 along with multiple other teams. While not fully confirmed, it seems as if the milestone deals created a conflict with Monster Jam's merchandising and promotional deals, where as a result of this, Monster Jam would stop booking Paul's trucks to appear at televised events for the 2000 season and was unable to create new merchandise for the truck ultimately never featuring the truck on television again. If you want to learn more about this topic, I highly suggest you check out this amazing video by California Monster Trucks, who explains this situation in great detail. Despite the truck's continued success on the circuit, 
It wasn't getting TV exposure while running for Monster Jam, nor was it part of Monster Jam's merchandising, prompting Paul to slowly withdraw his trucks from the circuit over the next couple of years, choosing to compete elsewhere. This would predictably lower the overall national exposure of Paul's trucks, but the team continued on and remained competitive. Monster Patrol did, however, receive some major TV exposure that year in the form of the infamous Monster Trucks 2000 event specially aired on UPN. Featuring Dave Harkey in his truck, it's safe to say that this program wasn't a positive for anybody involved, and if you feel like torturing yourself, you should check out this video that we covered about this awful event. Harkey's Monster Patrol would briefly become Tonka in the spring of 2000 before running as a makeshift Carolina Crusher once the sponsorship had ended, and ultimately returning to running as Monster Patrol later in the year, and now driven by Brian Townsend. During the summer, Todd Frolic would briefly return to the team, driving his old Monster Patrol truck from before, but a crash in Wildwood, New Jersey would lead him to leaving the team once more. That same year, Paul Schaefer would debut his brand new Monster Patrol, built on a modified PEI chassis and sporting a Dodge Ram body. This would become Paul's main truck until his retirement and made its first major appearance at the Indianapolis Jamboree that year. Kirk Dabney would also every so often run his Monster Patrol as Overkill, given there was an event where two Monster Patrols were appearing together. For 2001, Kirk Dabney would continue to pilot his Monster Patrol on the Monster Jam circuit, and Todd Frolic's Monster Patrol would finally be painted black and green, now driven by Scott Pontbriand. Brent Worsler would stop driving the Taurus 5 Monster Patrol in mid-2000, most likely replaced by Larry Swim for 2001. One of the only known photos of his truck competing at an event in 2001 is this photo, taken by Mike Dufresne, where the truck appears to be running beadlocks. This is most likely Larry Swim driving. Paul Schaefer's new Monster Patrol would not compete for Monster Jam during the winter season, but his previous Monster Patrol would, this time as Carolina Crusher and driven by Scott Chisholm. As far as we know, the truck would never compete as Monster Patrol again, being sold in 2006 and still competing to this day as Sniper. However, a brand new Monster Patrol would be introduced for 2001 as 2 Extreme Racing would take the former Ground Pounder truck and turn it into their own Monster Patrol driven by Gene Keenel. Monster Patrol would do well on the Monster Jam circuit with notable victories in Tacoma, Fort Myers, Philadelphia and Denver. But like in 2000, its only televised appearances on Monster Jam would be as Jeff Hoy's tough truck. By the summertime, Scott Pontbriand would leave the team to drive Gravedigger and Larry Swim would take his place in Monster Patrol. During the summer, Kirk Dabney's Monster Patrol would become extreme overkill for the next year, driven by Dabney and Bobby Z. 2001 also saw the debut of the Monster Patrol ride truck, built using the former Maximum Override. This would be the standard ride truck seen at most Paul Schaefer Motorsports event until it was sold in the mid-2000s, spending many years in rural Ontario, Canada before becoming Canadian Crusher and being sold once more and becoming Maximum Override once again in the 2010s. For 2002, the Taurus 5 Monster Patrol would be driven by Jesse Bass and would win a Monster Jam freestyle competition in the Houston Astrodome as well as a racing victory in Philadelphia. Larry Swim's Monster Patrol would become The Mummy Returns as part of the team's Universal Studios sponsorship, leading to a near clean sweep in Charleston, West Virginia, before going back to Monster Patrol during the spring. Then, the truck would be turned into the Scorpion King, once again a tie-in with Universal Studios and would compete as this for the next two years before ultimately turning back into Barefoot which it continued to run as until its retirement in 2008. Gene Keenel's Monster Patrol was still competing as well, becoming the most well-known Monster Patrol on the Monster Jam circuit over the next two years. Monster Patrol's Monster Jam schedule in 2002 was noticeably more sporadic, 
with the truck running more shows from Check and Flag Productions, Torgerson Motorsports, and performance promotions during the winter season, and the sporadic Monster Jam schedule would remain this way as time went on. Somewhere during this time, Bob Robbins would rather crudely run the Monster Patrol name on his Aftershock truck, perhaps as a way of fulfilling a booking for the name. In 2003, Paul Schaefer would turn his personal Monster Patrol into the Universal Monsters Frankenstein, still largely competing on the independent circuit. Kirk Dabney would return to driving Monster Patrol, this time adopting the famous black and green colour scheme. Dave Harwood would take over driving the Taurus 5 Monster Patrol and would be the truck's final driver before the chassis was renovated on the following year eventually becoming Kadeva. During this time, Dave's Monster Patrol would compete as the Scorpion King on occasion. Whether it ran the Scorpion King body with no wing, or the Monster Patrol body with the Scorpion King wing. The two extreme Monster Patrol would very briefly run a Ford Ranger body during the summer, painted with a lighter shade of green on accident. That same year, Dave Harwood and Kirk Dabney would square off against one another during a Paul Schaefer Motorsports show in Valparaiso, Indiana, both driving Monster Patrol at the same time. To nobody's surprise, Monster Patrol would win. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! In 2004, Paul Schaefer made his return to Monster Jam driving Frankenstein Monster Patrol in Rosemont, Illinois, competing in three out of four shows that weekend. Gene Keno would also finish driving Monster Patrol for two extreme racing by the end of the year, as the truck was sold back to Paul Schaefer Motorsports to be driven by Dave Ryan the following year. Kirk Dabney would also debut a newer F-150 body style and was easily the most competitive Monster Patrol at that time, and also the one that was receiving the most exposure. 2005 would prove to be a very eventful year for Monster Patrol and all of Paul Schaefer Motorsports. While not much had changed for Kirk Dabney's truck, still competing in Monster Jam intermittently and being one of the top level privateers of the entire fleet, the name would get much more television coverage thanks to the Monsters of Destruction series created by Milestone Motorsports and aired on the Outdoor Channel. Paul Schaefer's Frankenstein Monster Patrol would receive ample coverage during the first year of the series, featured as one of the top stars and one of the high-level competitors as well. 2005 would also see the retirement of Boogie Van and its chassis being converted into a brand new Monster Patrol driven by Rodney Tweedy. Rex Smith of Guerrilla Motorsports would debut his own Monster Patrol on what was the former El Bandito chassis. The former Two Extreme Monster Patrol would be sold to KC's Fireworks in Australia to become Monster Patrol USA, before becoming Batman two years later. KC's Fireworks would also purchase a Monster Patrol ride truck from Paul Schaefer, using what was formerly Kirk Dabney's Monster Patrol before being sold in 2008. In November, Paul Schaefer Motorsports would host their first and only World Finals event in D-Land, Florida which saw 16 trucks competing in a Pro-MT officiated racing competition and an absolutely insane freestyle competition. Frankenstein Monster Patrol would tie Carolina Crusher in the freestyle competition with perfect scores, but Carolina Crusher would be declared the winner via tiebreaker. 2006 would see Monster Patrol mostly absent from the Monsters of Destruction TV series, mainly competing on the Amsel Rockin' Monster Truck Winter Series, being the official Paul Schaefer Motorsports Tour. The team had been running their own tour and performing their own shows across the country for multiple years at this point, as this was the most financially successful strategy for the team, but this was their most high-profile tour to date. KC's and Ace Fireworks would purchase two more trucks from the United States to be shipped to Australia, being Rex Smith and Don King's Monster Patrol and Awesome Kong. Monster Patrol would become the not-cursed Barefoot USA, while Awesome Kong would become the second Monster Patrol USA. Meanwhile, the former Taurus 4 chassis, being the original Monster Patrol, 
would compete at its final event in Sunrise, Florida before being retired and scrapped. 2007 would see the last big touring year for Paul Schaefer Motorsports. By this point, Monster Patrol had no longer had regular TV coverage, so the truck's contemporary popularity was beginning to lessen even more than when it stopped being featured on Monster Jam back in the early 2000s. Monster Patrol's final Monster Jam appearance would be in Miami, Florida that same year, being the former Boogie Van version. That being said, Monster Patrol made multiple cameos in home videos Monster Jam had been selling up to this point in the 2000s, such as all versions of Crash Madness 1, The True Life of Tom Mentz, and the history of monster trucks at the Pontiac Silver Dome. In 2008, Frankenstein would be turned back into Monster Patrol, this time featuring a more modern Dodge Ram body and an airbrush flame paint job. This would be the final new paint job to be unveiled for Monster Patrol by Paul Schaefer Motorsports and is the body that remains on the truck to this day. The Boogie Van Monster Patrol would be sold to Mark Gilbert out of Adelaide, South Australia, who would drive the truck for nearly 15 years, eventually becoming the only Monster Patrol in Australia by the mid-2010s. Christopher Roy's Nitro Promotions would also debut their own version of Monster Patrol that same year, driven by Michael Roy and run on the original Executioner chassis before being sold in 2013. By 2009, Kirk Dabney was no longer driving Monster Patrol, with other drivers such as David Brown and James Teague III driving his truck instead. The truck had stopped running the wing late in the previous year and the body was looking increasingly rougher as time passed, but was still touring and performing regularly. Its final shows as Monster Patrol would take place in the following year in 2010. Meanwhile, for the second South Pacific Monster Truck World Finals at Archerfield Speedway in Brisbane, Australia, Mark Gilbert's Monster Patrol would be given a beautiful new flamed paint job and would be driven by Paul Schaefer himself at the event. The same would occur the following year, as Paul would get behind the wheel of Monster Patrol for the third South Pacific World Finals. The 2010s would prove to be the end of the road for Paul Schaefer Motorsports' competitive nature, as the team would only compete in a handful of shows in the early part of the decade and Monster Patrol's last performances with the team took place in 2012, with Paul and Jeremy Brady behind the wheel, though it's unclear who drove them. Paul's trucks would mainly do displays during this time, and previously appeared on an episode of America's Worst Driver in 2010. Casey's Fireworks on Australia would debut their third Monster Patrol USA that same year, running on the former Outback Thunder 2 chassis and using part of Rex Smith's original Monster Patrol body before becoming Krusty Demons the following year. As Paul Schaefer Motorsports was fully retiring from active competition in 2013, Steve Quercio would introduce his own version of Monster Patrol, running on the former Monster Mayhem chassis and driven by John Furby. Yet the truck would only be run for a year before becoming Reaper's Revenge. Steve's brother, Rick Quercio, also had a Monster Patrol ride truck for many years prior, which eventually became Redneck Road Trip. Also in 2013, Michael Phelps out of Paradise, Texas, would unveil his very own rendition of Monster Patrol, originally as a ride truck, then as a separate race truck and becoming a full-time competitor in 2014. Phelps would spend the next eight years being the primary Monster Patrol driver in the United States, competing for various independent promoters across the country. Mark Gilbert would continue to drive Monster Patrol in Australia on occasion, eventually competing once a year at the Monster Truck Rumble events in Adelaide, which Gilbert would promote. For most of the 2010s, it was Phelps and Gilbert keeping the Monster Patrol name in the spotlight. In January of 2022, one of the most talked about sales in Monster Truck history would take place, as James Trantina of Triple B Motorsports would purchase all of Paul Schaefer Motorsports, including the Monster Patrol name. James has said that Monster Patrol is his favorite truck, so it made sense that he'd add one to his fleet. After purchasing the Jailbird Monster Truck, 
That's exactly what he did, as the Pink and Black Moss Patrol would debut in June of that year, driven by Casey Krumschroeder. By the end of the year, this would be the only Mars Patrol still in competition, as Mark Gilbert would unfortunately pass away that summer, leaving the last Australian Mars Patrol without a driver. A tribute to Mark Gilbert would be performed at the latest edition of the Monster Truck Rumble, where all of the trucks would jump over Mark Gilbert's Monster Patrol. The contract for Phelps to run his own Mars Patrol would be ended later in the year, after a falling out between them and James Trantina that we covered in a video on Triple B. As you know, 2023 marks the 30 year anniversary of Master Patrol. So for Triple B Motorsports, they knew it was right to celebrate this occasion. As a result, at the toughest Master Truck Tour event in Grand Forks, North Dakota, the team would unveil the brand new 30th anniversary edition of Master Patrol sporting a modern Chevy Silverado body and gold features. The truck was run on the former Boss Gator chassis and driven by Austin Tweedy. Unfortunately, despite the truck's high profile unveiling and regal appearance, Tweedy would roll the truck not once, but twice that night, thanks to the tacky North Dakota dirt. As a result, pieces of the truck's fiberglass body were put up for auction by the team, with the proceeds going to the International Monster Truck Hall of Fame. The 30th Anniversary Monster Patrol would return for the four-wheel jamboree in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania in July. For such a legendary and widely utilized name, being the flagship truck of Paul Schaefer Motorsports, it's surprising that Monster Patrol has never won a world championship in its 30 year career. The closest it has come was winning the 1997 US Truck Fest Championship, which is not officially recognized as a Monster Jam Championship event, but it was the closest thing to a Monster Truck Official Championship given out by Monster Jam that year. Still, Monster Patrol holds multiple unofficial records in the world of Monster Trucks, as not only has it had the highest number of different teams that have run the name, but also the highest number of different drivers, being over 90 drivers who have driven a version of Monster Patrol over the truck's 30 year lifespan. Unsurprisingly, that list contains some of the most revered drivers in the history of the sport, many of whom would get their first big break behind the wheel of a Monster Truck while driving Monster Patrol. Names include Tom Mance, Larry Swim, Rod Schmidt, Scott Pontbriand, and Rodney Tweedy. Some of the most well-known Monster Truck toys are based on Monster Patrol 2, specifically the Radio Shack RC truck from the early 2000s. And the truck has made appearances in multiple Monster Truck video games too, such as the Monster Truck Madness series and Monster Truck Destruction. While the truck may not have the championship experience some of its most famous drivers have, it undoubtedly has made a profound impact in the world of Monster Trucks and is one of the most recognizable Monster Trucks of all time. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon with some more monster truck content.